Thanks for, uh, for your time and availability to join our webinar. I'm Nicolo Zazzari from Test IT Services. I'm involved in the cyberwiser.eu project and uh, will be hosting this uh, webinar today. Uh, so, uh, this is the first of a series of webinar organized by the cyberwiser.eu project. Uh, which in which we'll be, we will be covering different aspects of uh, cyber security, uh, like password awareness, uh, weaknesses, phishing, uh, and other cyber security topics which are related and we are investigating through uh, our projects. Um, this will be the chance for you to have a, a pretty much detailed look at how we are tackling those, uh, these challenges inside of CyberWiser uh, thanks to our uh, platform. And you will see uh, a detailed hands-on training session even today. So I will be starting by uh, giving a brief introduction to, to the project and uh, to what we call the Open Pilot Stream, in, uh, which basically grant you the access for free to our CyberWiser platform in which you can test basically your skills uh, on cybersecurity. Then I will pass the floor to uh, Antonio uh, Alvarez Romero from Atos, which is the coordinator uh, of the CyberWiser.eu project, which will give you a very high level introduction uh, of the CyberWiser.eu platform. Uh, then <laughs> we will pass the floor to our colleague Vasileios Fotis from, uh, from RIA, which is one of the technical partners which has been mostly involved in the development um, of the platform, uh, which will introduce the topic of today, which again is password awareness weakness, and will uh, um, uh, we'll basically show how we are uh, tackling this in the context of the CyberWiser.eu platform with uh, with an insights and a specific session on the on the CyberWiser.eu uh, cyber range. Uh, then we will have a little question and answer coming from you. So I kindly invite each one of you if you have any uh, any questions during the <clears throat> during the presentation. Uh, there's a question and answer section in the tool, in the Zoom tool. You will see it's right at the center. So please free, uh, feel free to uh, type your question there and we will pick them up and cover them in the question and answer. Uh, and then we will simply close, uh, wrap up the webinar and, uh, and sum up and uh, remind you of the open pilot possibility that we have. Uh, so that's the agenda for today. Uh, just briefly introduce you to the CyberWiser.eu project for those who are not familiar with. I will say just a couple of words and then I'll, uh, I'll leave this duty to, uh, to Antonio. Uh, so CyberWiser is an innovation action uh, which is basically developed in the CyberWiser.eu platform which is a mix of theoretical and hands-on training platform for, uh, for professional training in uh, cybersecurity. Uh, the project runs from September 2018 through February 2021. So we are entering the final phase of the project. And specifically for this phase, we are featuring this open pilot stream, uh, which I will briefly introduce later, uh, which is basically giving you the access, free access to test our platform for free. You can uh, pre-book your pilot in the URL that you will see, uh, that you see uh, on the slide. Uh, so let me just briefly mention who is online today. As you will see, uh, we'll have quite a few representative from, uh, from different stakeholders, which are uh, the ones that we are targeting uh, on the, I mean, which are the main stakeholders from the platform. So mainly academia research, but also small and medium enterprises are here. So that's a very good news. And we are also differentiating very much uh, on, the, on the professional role uh, that, uh, that, the, that the audience have. And obviously we have also a good, uh, let's say country breakdown. So mostly people from Italy, but I, will see, I can see also Romania, Poland, and Austria are in there, uh, plus uh, a lot of other countries uh, across the Europe and uh, beyond. Uh, I'm also glad to see that we are 
a pretty good gender balance, uh, 60 40, let's say, from male and female. So that's, uh, that's always a good news. Uh, so that is what we have online at the moment. So let me just briefly introduce you uh, with the open pilot scheme that we launched on the, uh, the cyberwiser.eu project. Uh, so basically, the open pilot scheme is an application form which you can find online at the URL that you will see uh, here on the, on the slide, uh, in which basically we are offering free uh, support to cybersecurity training. So uh, both for technical and non-technical staff, we are building this, uh, what we call learning path, which is customizable to your needs. Uh, so the application is open to any European organization at no cost, uh, apart from the investment that you will have to, to give in terms of time and resources to actually carry out, the, uh, carry out the, the training. And on the right, you can see some of the um, organization across Europe that are already uh, working with, our, with us testing uh, the cyberwiser.eu platform from free. Uh, so when you will click on the URL, basically we will collect some data, uh, which are basically from you. So uh, we will collect this kind of information. So the specs of your open pilot. So, uh, the desired starting date, the number of resources that you want to be trained, and the profile, for example, if you, have, if you want to, uh, I don't know, train uh, uh, administrative staff or rather technical staff. And also, uh, basically, you can specify which kind of exercise you would like us to, uh, to implement from you and which kind of uh, uh, cybersecurity horses you would like, you would like to take. Uh, once we have filled all this information, basically, uh, you will need us to communicate with us to give us the practical list of the trainees people that you want to uh, that you want to have access to the platform. We will prepare for you your, your pilot, so giving you a dedicated uh, workspace area in which basically you will find all the information you need in order to carry out uh, carry out the training. Uh, after the registration. Basically, we will define the overall, uh, what we call the learning path. So, uh, which will compose basically uh, your cybersecurity training. So, the learning path could be uh, no, uh, online courses, like in the form of Moodle, uh, with uh, simple uh, theoretical uh, courses with quizzes and uh, exams at the end of it. It could be some webinar, it could be some classroom uh, together uh, matched with uh, cyber range tests and assessment. Uh, at the end, obviously, you will get, uh, you will get some, acquire some cyber security skill in the topics that you have, uh, you have chosen. You will be ready promptly and uh, uh, you will be ready to react to some of the cyber incidents, obviously, uh, according to the topics that you have chosen. Uh, and uh, you will be able, basically, to put in practice all the things that you have learned in, uh, through, our, through your training path. And uh, as a side note, uh, we are also putting out what we call the cyber, which you will see in the last bullet point, which is the cybersecurity professional register, which is basically a register for all professional working in cybersecurity in Europe. So if you uh, become, decide to become one of our open pilot, you will be also granted to have access uh, through the cybersecurity professional register, which can be used uh, by organizations all across Europe to look for, uh, let's say, the cybersecurity workforce of tomorrow. Uh, so that provides you with, uh, with a great visibility in which you can showcase your skills basically. Uh, and that's it for the open pilot on which we will, uh, we will touch again uh, base later. Uh, so now I would like to leave the floor to Antonio, which is the coordinator of uh, cyberwiser.eu, which will uh, uh, take you through a brief introduction of the cyberwiser.eu platform. So Antonio. Okay, thank you, Nicolò. You can share your screen. Yes, yeah, sure. I mean to do that. Uh, this one. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. You should be seeing the front cover of my presentation. Yes. Can yes. you confirm that? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Antonio Alvarez from Atos. As Nicolo said, I am the coordinator of the, of the Cyberwiser.eu project. Um, he has presented the project itself. This presentation is about the, the platform. I am going to focus on, on the product we are developing in the, in the project. Um, Cyberwiser.eu is a cyber range platform, and this platform uh, is ambitioned to first uh, deliver cybersecurity professional training uh, to a wide community, uh, including uh, people ranging from students to experienced professionals, uh, including the public and the private sectors, and a platform that is applicable to different verticals. Uh, this platform uh, is ambitioned to provide with training tools and materials. Uh, to cover both theory and, and practice. Uh, the objective is uh, first learn how to attack in order to know how to defend, uh, putting the users in the shoes of the attacker. In the jargon of the cyber range training, the, the attacker is the red team. And also we want to put them in the shoes of the blue team uh, who are the defenders. Apart from the technical skills that we want you to acquire, uh, our objective is also to promote and develop a solid cybersecurity culture across Europe and, and worldwide. Here I am providing a high level overview of the architecture for you to have some idea of how this uh, works. CyberWasser.io integrates a learning platform and a cyber range. Starting by the cyber range, uh, it relies on a hardware infrastructure this infrastructure provides a certain amount of computation resources. The resources are made available in order to emulate the network that will be the subject of the training scenario. Normally, we emulate the network that uh, we will have to defend in the real world. Uh, our, our objective is to replicate critical situations that we may face and learn what to do and how in those uh, situations. The emulated network is the main subject of a training scenario, but of course the user can uh, can count on some auxiliary ends, uh, for example, attack and defense tools. Uh, we also have tools to monitor the exercise status in real time, including the assessment of the cyber risk, which is a feature that is uh, very innovative in this in this platform. It's very innovative also the performance evaluator that uh, allow us to know in real time how we are performing and the great that is being obtained. Uh, in this way, we, we know we have immediate feedback of uh, about our performance from the from the platform. The the scenarios we work with uh, before existing, of course, have to be designed and configured. And to do that, we have a special graphic interface that is provided at cyber range uh, level. Um, and finally, the the cyber range is integrated uh, as part of a learning platform. And in this learning platform, we have a set of training materials that are provided as a preparation for the practical exercises. The practical exercises are run on the cyber range. Um, in this uh, learning platform, apart from studying and, and learning, of course, the, the users can follow and manage uh, the progress of their learning, know their grades, and get their, their budget, their, their digital uh, diplomas. Uh, the grades, etc. So it's a very complete platform with uh, a lot of uh, useful features for, for the users and also for the teachers who are also, of course, part of the of the user uh, of the users of the platform. So uh, this is a quick presentation. Just to conclude, uh, this platform uh, provides uh, a training uh, training platform, including a cyber range, as I commented before. Um, simulation with high fidelity of uh, network infrastructures that is used uh, as a scenario. It provides exercises, modules, courses, and customized learning paths. Uh, Real-time monitoring of exercise progress. The, um, the follow the track of the performance of the user in real time. Uh, management of individual learning paths and, and curricula. And 
thanks to that, uh, this allows, first of all, theoretical training. Once the theoretical training is done, you can go to the hands-on training. You will see now an example of this hands-on part in the practical exercises that Vasilis will present now. And also, uh, it's uh, possible with this platform to learn uh, from playing the role of both the attacker and the, and the defender. So basically, uh, this is it. It's a quick introduction. I think that it's more, most, more interesting for you to go directly to the practical part um, that Basilis will present. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Antonio, for this quick introduction. Yeah. Um, yeah, so as Antonio said, obviously, we are not covering the theoretical part in this, uh, in this webinar because we think the, um, I mean, it makes more sense uh, for you as a participant to see uh, the, the practice. And this is what we are going to show now with the session with uh, Vasilis. Uh, so Vasilis, if you want to share your screen. Good afternoon to everybody. My name is Vasilis Portis. I'm a security engineer for a group working with the uh, uh, cyber wiser and open pilots project for a while. Um, I will quickly present you today uh, the way the CyberWiser platform works uh, with creating scenarios and uh, experiencing um, different cyber attacks uh, through the web interface and the uh, so the laboratory of uh, password cracking that I will uh, quickly show you on the platform. Uh, just a few words, uh, words on the password cracking. Uh, password cracking um, is the process uh, or maybe um, starting with the uh, authentication, uh, everything uh, in security is based on people uh, from something we know, something we have, uh, something we are. Uh, these are main, the main uh, security uh, controls we use today in order to update our identity. Password authentication is one of these uh, modes of uh, identity. Security, let's say, and this is something that only the user knows. Um, passwords uh, in uh, modern systems are um, based on an, on, uh, an algorithm transformation uh, that transforms them in uh, unreadable, in an unreadable format. In, uh, in those days, we used to count many text passwords stored and now they are transformed uh, in an encrypted format um, that is reversible. Uh, in this sense, um, passwords are difficult to, um, let's say, discover. Uh, however, if we use um, there is the application um, passwords in modern systems, yes, are stored in encrypted and readable representation of hashes. And the hashes are in one way encryption in the means that we, uh, it is impossible to um, decrypt uh, a hash. Uh, a hash is, an, is unreadable, uh, it's not related to the plain text that we use for a password. And in this sense, it's impossible to um, discover uh, a user's password. However, uh, there are tools that they use a different method that, uh, based on a database of uh, several uh, lists of passwords that are in the wild, uh, or by running several algorithms. Uh, that they use all the combination of uh, uh, a word of a certain length 
they can transform each password to a hash and match uh, the password uh, hash if there is uh, identical match. Uh, the attacker knows that uh, this is the correct uh, password of the user. Uh, the strength of the password that we have to use uh, is the most important factor for uh, the security of our uh, passwords and depends on the length of the security and the unpredictability. Um, unpredictability uh, refers to uh, not using uh, dictionary words or not using common uh, words that somebody can find in a dictionary because the attacker can uh, use several methods with uh, all the combinations of letters and uh, numbers to predict a uh, password. So the best way to uh, protect our passwords is by using combination of uh, letters uh, numbers and combination of words that uh, they are not, they, they don't make sense as a sentence. Um, so, for example, you can use a combination of, you uh, can use a combination of my house, when we have two words, uh, my house makes sense as a common sentence and it's uh, also easy to break. Uh, but if we use, for example, um, something that uh, is irrelevant uh, in common dictionary word, let's say, is the best method of passwords. Um, so today we're gonna see a lab uh, of a method uh, for revealing uh, passwords. Uh, this uh, process is called password cracking. And as we said, is the process of matching uh, the encrypted hashes of the passwords uh, in uh, by using um, the dictionary attack and the brute force mode, as we call it. There are several cracking tools in the wild, and they are free. Um, some of them uh, you see them here: time, Google. Uh, John Verita and Haskell. Uh, we will use the John Verita. Uh, this is part of uh, the Kali Linux uh, tool framework uh, that we have uh, in the VM uh, in the Cybervisor platform. Same time. Uh, I can show them how to do the scenario. Yeah, that's fine. As it is. Uh, can you adjust a little bit your mic? Maybe you are too close to it so we can hear you better. Okay, is it better now? Is it better now uh, or not? Yeah, slightly, slightly better. Do you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you, Vasilis. Okay, sorry about this. Okay. Um, so in CyberAge, uh, we can create a scenario from scratch. We have um, digital libraries not, not shown here. We have the uh, database. We can host the database of uh, uh, virtual machine assets, uh, any type of operating system, any type of uh, network node, router, firewall. Uh, bridge, 
the switch. I can also control So here you can see um, the platform that is hosted uh, is hosted uh, on the data center of Korea. Here we have a digital library of uh, many VMs. We we possibly add more and more assets on it for uh, either for our data center or for several ways of exercise, scenarios, etc. Um, and we have, as you can see, plenty of uh, systems, uh, Windows, Linux, Linux, um, and several other proprietary industrial uh, operating systems that we can use uh, for our uh, scenario creation. I will create an example of uh, Scenario. So we can even clone an existing scenario and start from what we have there and there, adding uh, more assets and functionality. So I can clone this one and the one that we can use. Is another password question. Uh, we have two assets already here. Uh, we put several details. We can put the timer for an exercise uh, with a minute. Here we create the clone of this scenario. We uh, have all the characteristics that uh, the other one has. Different, different IDs. And we can start from here deploying more assets around the scenario we have, or we can start one from scratch so you can delete everything here and start the action virtual machines, several other components. Uh, we have uh, separated the uh, virtual machines in several uh, groups. You can see the elements uh, here in the left. Uh, in this group, we have routers, firewalls, so we can add uh, this element here, and we can select 200 assets on the right. Type what we need, uh, with a router, for example, I'm searching for the routers, and I'm selecting uh, several types of ability. Then we can add the resources for us, basically, fuel, uh, RAM. Uh, we can even add this equipment that means uh, if I select the uh, four or five here, for example, it will be created uh, four or five times with several IDs, and we can use this for a scenario of multiple users. Each user will see uh, one of the four or five uh, virtual machines. Uh, and for each student, for example, uh, it will be assigned only one asset. Um, we can have the workstation, a group of workstations, uh, a server, and we we'll connect them together with a network. Just by dragging, uh, dragging uh, easily um, the components. On the asset 
course, we can assign, for example, if I go to the school, we assign a lot of you. We have design. Uh, we are on a design mode. Uh, actually, the platform has many, many functionalities that we can talk until tomorrow. Uh, some of them that you can uh, see here, for example, here we are in design mode. And if with the platform, um, if we go on a validation mode, if the platform detects that uh, we have made a mistake, some sort of mistake, it will uh, flag the an error here uh, with a message. For example, here it says that we have uh, not assigned a massive uh, new an operating system uh, to this uh, virtual machine. So we go here on the password. On the server, we have the same error and uh, the same. We can assign uh, an IP address. The platform uh, helps the user and the Design uh, the scenario of a designer here by proposing uh, an IP address summit mask uh, based on the settings on uh, the network that you put before. Uh, and if I put something else, for example, that is not correct uh, in a networking sense. It will still throw an error. And you can see here it says uh, no asset has been assigned, okay, that was one uh, issue. And then uh, the IP is not compatible with the subnet mask, etc. So we go, we check the errors that we have. Uh, and I will think of the acid there. So once we are clear from errors, we can deploy a template uh, that will have all the characteristics that we put for the for DM, uh, system resources to do from uh, deployment. Submit it because we will have this function submitted for an evaluator. So, a second level uh, 
uh, of support him uh, is responsible to uh, see if the scenarios are being by uh, somebody else or a user uh, or another measure of the team is correct and uh, we should consider the logic scenario. Now we, after the presentation, we can take the template, that's before the deployment. And from there, we can start instantiating the VMs without the scenario. Um, so the back engine gets all the commands to assign all the characteristics to a VM, the tablets, networks, bridges, switches, um, and it starts uh, deploying a console quickly uh, on the background without a very uh, powerful, uh, let's say, cloud uh, supporting uh, platform. For example, here you can see that we have uh, deployed 613 images, um, and the allocated CPU that we have on the back engine is uh, this number divided by 10. Uh, is for, uh, this so we have 400 cores running at the background, and uh, uh, about uh, Eight hundred gigabytes uh, of uh, memory, and you can see several uh, consumption of resources here. What is the case of the VMs and the real CPU on the external platform, which is a cluster of servers, essentially. And the instances that I just created. You can see them all here. Uh, the support technical team uh, can run at the, uh, all these process of the background on this platform. Uh, while the cyber lanes is a uh, uh, user friendly, uh, not to be involved uh, with the complicated system in the background, have almost everything. Done, uh, the radical phase. I will go uh, to the lab that uh, I want to demonstrate. Um, one of the exercises that we run is the lab password cracking. So what Created um, a scenario with the necessary uh, machines to run uh, two phases uh, of the password cracking process we talked briefly before. Uh, in this demonstration, I will show you uh, the password cracking uh, that happens offline. Uh, we have an attacker that uh, uh, got a list of uh, password. Uh, hashes around this uh, VM. The machine has all the time, uh, he or she has all the time uh, to start uh, running the software tools. Uh, in this case, it will be John the Reaper in the Kali Linux box in order to track and uh, to find matches uh, for the passwords. The student can log in with this machine. If it is 
Sense the solution will have some scripts inside, so uh, the user can adjust the display according to the needs. So here we are. We are in a Kali uh, Linux uh, attacking tool framework, uh, virtual box. Uh, we will use one, it has many uh, list, a uh, long list of uh, many tools. As you can see, one is a part of this. Uh, we're going to use John the Ripper for our attack. So what we will do is uh, to show. Uh, to the student once the attacker has received a list of uh, password hashes. Uh, the hashes stored in our modern computers are in this form. They are unreadable, but they correspond to the new password. We said that this process is irreversible, but uh, this way of password cracking uh, can reveal passwords by matching uh, this kind of uh, cipher. So we open John uh, the password tracking tool. So the easy password uh, are passwords that uh, the, the length uh, are less than eight characters. And the easy password we selected here is four characters long. So we will go to, uh, we have se uh, several modes of attack on the top of uh, the We have dictionary attack. And brute force attack, we will try brute force attack that uh, tries uh, all the combinations of, of alphanumeric characters for a certain uh, length of uh, password that we will set. So we choose the options of the incremental, incremental is. The book was John on the character set name. We uh, we will uh, try to match uh, password hashes that might have uh, all lower uh, letters. So we selected. Uh, easy password with all lower letters here. Anyway. So we we'll try to, to run the password character against the list with lower letters. We will use maximum uh, for these settings. We will use the maximum default, and we will care only for the maximum number four characters long. And we start the attack. When the attack is ready, we uh, saw how easy it is to uh, crack uh, a small password with only lower case. And only letters. So it took uh, less than a few seconds. You can see here
Username uh, is revealed by other components by gender repair. Which you uh, gender repair also detects the encryption uh, uh, order. In this case, it's sapphire. Code options. In this case, we select a uh, left of them. We live before. Uh, we are looking for uh, passwords with uh, lower keys, letters, and we change a maximum to ten. Start for that. This will take a little bit longer. Uh, from what we saw, it is about two minutes to perform the attack and we will passwords. On the console, you want to see the series of attacks before. Several details. And I, I wanted to mention that the, uh, the strength of the password, uh, the length, uh, the combination of letters, of letters we use, uh, increase rapidly the time that the uh, attacker uh, needs to find the password. Uh, the brute force attack, the one that we're using here, uh, can directly can reveal any password in the world. However, nowadays we don't have uh, the resources, uh, the modern computers and technology uh, will take uh, hundreds of years, uh, maybe thousands in some cases, to uh, reveal password uh, and to crack, as we say, password. It depends on the machine that we use. For the first password cracking that we saw with four letters, uh, we see that uh, our ordinary digital machine with one CPU uh, of less than two years ahead, four gigabytes of RAM, took four uh, 
seconds to review. The repetitions and the combinations of the background are enormous. Uh, we're talking about one hundred hundreds of thousands of repetitions uh, and combinations that the PC is trying in order to find a match uh, to this cipher code here. The kind of cipher code. As we said, its password uh, gives a unique output of this type. There's, if there are two passwords uh, in the world, let's say, ever used, that will have the same output as this one, then the algorithm used, the hash algorithm used, uh, is not working. So it needs to be changed or is useless. So, all they are, are has algorithms produced today, they produce unique outputs. And the PC, John and the this case, our tool uh, is trying several combinations of alphanumeric uh, characters of length maximum of 10 in this case now, uh, and is producing uh, several outputs of this type. If an output is matching with this, then we know that uh, this is the correct password. And of course, while trying, it's trying play plain text, text. So it maps uh, the output with the plain text password. So the one that is matching with this one, we know that it's the password and we have it as a plain text. So we see that it takes uh, much longer now, uh, only by increasing the length. We didn't touch the um, these capitals. Uh, we, we're still looking for only for lower case, and we didn't add um, any complex special characters. Sorry about this, but the process will be precise. On the second phase, we will we'll use the same tool uh, and the help uh, of a uh, huge list that the uh, attackers used uh, that are based on common words that uh, humans are using to create their passwords. And this is called dictionary attack. 
this helps a lot and uh, can show how reliable uh, our passwords are, no matter uh, how many numbers or special letters uh, we can use in our password um, because they are always uh, updated lists that, uh, with stolen passwords uh, or dictionary words with different definitions. And I will show you um, it, um, this slide and how we can do it. I think we don't have time to wait more on that. I think it shows you that uh, it's taking more time to break the password that we eventually does of the speed in our exercises. Uh, Basilis. Yes, uh, I go on the next one, sorry. Do you want to just show the dictionary attack as we are running a yeah. bit late, maybe? Yes, sure. sure. In this case, uh, you saw how much time it took already, and we're still waiting. We will use the help of the dictionary. This is a big file we stored uh, files, uh, sorry, passwords, uh, and the software inside all the dimensions as well. This. Much of the So we're using uh, a file like this. Heroku.txt is a famous 
our file and is on let's say the hacking uh, market. It's a very long file, it has problems to load it even. But you can see what type of list it is and what type of pa uh, passwords it has. It's a, it's a very big file. It contains passwords of this type, uh, serial passwords, stolen passwords. I found uh, either on mail or on stolen machines. Um, and this password is always updated. Uh, currently, has several hundreds of uh, uh, millions of uh, several words used as passwords. So you can see. At the same time, um, so I cannot even click on it because it's so huge that uh, it's problems to the PC to load it. And it's only a text file, which is a lighter uh, file we can have. It doesn't have any images in it or any other components. So based on that, now we saw that the previous uh, password cracking without the dictionary, we have the use of this file. Uh, it took a lot of time, a lot of time. We didn't uh, uh, finish it actually, but now by using uh, the password list, trying all the combinations where we have the two passwords here, and you can see it was password one, so nation mark. So if these were extremely much more difficult than what we put before. Because before we didn't put any special characters and capital letters, we only used lower and still we couldn't find it. So machine could take uh, many hours days to find uh, the plain code password. So yeah, uh, the purpose was to show you that uh, it's easy for a hacker uh, in only a few uh, let's say, uh, amount of time uh, using a list uh, of stolen passwords or even without a list uh, to start tracking uh, authentication and adding uh, several uh, systems with all the aspects that uh, we follow after, stealing documents, potential information, etc. Uh, and this is uh, an offline attack that we showed uh, that it, the attacker is not exposed to the outside world, uh, is not connected to the internet, is using on this machine and computer. Uh, it has all the time issue, has all the time uh, to crack passwords uh, and use them after. Um, part of this exercise uh, is the online. Uh, password cracking, where we have a simulation of a network, uh, a remote server, a web interface, um, and the attacker uh, is using another, um, let's say, a database on his local PC uh, and trying to crack the web interface uh, credentials uh, on the other side. It's not part of this presentation. Um, thank you very much for watching this part at least and for your questions to wait. Um, if you have any questions. Yeah, thanks, Vasilis. I'm, I'm sorry about the week. Thank you, Vasilis, for your, uh, for your demonstration. Uh, so, obviously, this was like a uh, first insight uh, of the cyberwise.eu platform. And obviously, if you register to the Open Pilot, you will be able to actually test all the features 
that we are developing uh, in it, uh, uh, an application form, you can find it at uh, the cybervisor.eu uh, website. So uh, if you would like to apply, please go there. It will take you uh, no more than, uh, than 10 minutes to fill out the information that we need. And then we will contact you uh, basically to establish uh, the learning path and the exercise you would, uh, you would also like to follow. Uh, so we have a couple of questions, uh, I see, coming from the chat. Uh, so the first one is that, is it possible to, uh, the, to for multiple users to use the platform uh, simultaneously for the same training? Uh, so Vasilis, do you want to yeah. answer it? Yeah. Yes, I'm trying. Yes, of course, of course. It is, uh, you, you mean multiple users uh, for the same scenario? We can have, yeah, we can create the same scenario for uh, multiple instances. I can try to find uh, if we have one here. Yes, but uh, uh, in any case, when you create a scenario, uh, you can create as many instances uh, as you want of the same scenario. So it will be uh, there will be several copies of this scenario um, with the same characteristics. As I said, it will be the same object, but with different with different IDs. Yes. If I find the uh, one that we use here, I'll show you how it is. Or I can create, if you want uh, to see, I can create the uh, uh, one if we take a bit. Thanks, Vasilis. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Uh, then we have other uh, questions. So I'm not familiar with Cyber Range. So will the project help me to understand how to use it? Uh, Antonio, would you like to, to answer this? Uh, yes, for sure. Um, of course, if you are not familiar with the with the cyber range, first of all, you will uh, get some basic information about how to use the how to use the tool. And once uh, you have learned the, the very basics, you can go directly to the different applications or the different exercises about the, the topics, the cybersecurity topics we are. Uh, we are covering. So yes, of course, uh, you you can learn first the, the concept about cyber range, uh, and what it is about, and, and then going directly to the training part. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, also we have some specific material uh, which is related to the usage uh, of the cyber range coming up. So. Uh, so yes, uh, this will can, also uh, help. If I can add something, the, yep. the, learning, the learning curve uh, for the basics, uh, it's uh, quite good. So it's not complicated to, to learn the, the very basics to, to use it. Of course, you will need more time to become an advanced user. Uh, but in the meantime, you will have uh, done several exercises and you will be more knowledgeable about the different cybersecurity topics we are interested about. Yeah, thank you. Uh, here, here we have the option um, clo um, so I created a clone of the scenario we are using. Uh, I validated it and now I'm ready to create uh, an instance, but I have an option to create more instances here. And for example, I can do uh, four. And this will be four instances of the same object, the same, same scenario. Mm -hmm. That will be used for from four students or users uh, isolated from each other. And the permissions can be modified for each scenario for several for certain users to access only. So here we can see that we have four instances. 
on two mountain. And they all uh, have associations and characteristics with uh, different ideas and backgrounds. So we have high school. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Aziz. So we have uh, several instances that can be used, uh, basically. And from here, I can talk, try to just to add this thing from here. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. yeah. Uh, from here, for example, for each uh, instance, you can manage the, uh, you can select the users from the user database uh, of this platform that we have, uh, the users that we have now, and you can control. Um, if I see, for example, you know, one, uh, this is for the exercise. Um, we can assign the teams, we are uh, evaluated after the grade that goes uh, on the platform, and we can add and we can select what uh, to see, for example. In our scenario, we can see only one VM, or all the VMs, or only the network, or only the only machine. Yeah, so you can do many different things on each screen. Yeah, thanks, Vasilis. Uh, another question just came in. So, yeah, so basically it's where they can interact so if the more user uh, can let's say play in the same copy of the scenario uh, where they can interact well for this we have a dedicated workspace in which basically people that are uh, let's say uh, people inside of a same organization for example or a same team uh, can write and exchange uh, messages related to the exercise. They will all get notification when a message comes in, and so basically they can communicate there. Uh, you have not seen this part inside of the Saber range because actually it's a part that we as Trusted D developed. Uh, so it's a step before, let's say, the, the Saber range. So that's where uh, the people are going to interact. Uh, is the project only focusing on password awareness? Last question. So obviously no, we are focusing on different aspects uh, of cybersecurity. And if you will follow, let's say, this, this series of webinars that we are pulling out, uh, just to give you some example of the topics that we will be covering, uh, we span from SQL injection to phishing and cross-site scripting just to, uh, to enumerate some. So, uh, thank you again uh, for joining and for staying longer than expected. Uh, we will uh, come back to you with a thank you message. We will share, obviously, the slides uh, and we will reply to any other questions to which might come in. So, feel free to contact us uh, in any case. And also, the recording of the webinar will be, will be online. So we will send you uh, an email, basically, saying when this will be up in the in the cyberwiser.eu webinar. And we will also update you on when the next webinar will be, um, probably in uh, uh, early September. OK, thanks again. And thanks to also Vasilis and Antonio. And see you next time. Thank you very much.